Now, there's another way in which Indigenous people predicted the weather uh, using this phenomena of scintillation that we explored in the last video. And we can think of that uh, if we think of a rainbow, for instance, uh, and the effect that it has. Um, so the rainbow is, a, is an optical phenomena that occurs um, at around the time that we have rain. And it's uh, an unusual um, event in that it's a transient event so that it happens and it disappears very quickly. So if we dig a little further into what actually happens when a rainbow occurs, we get this um, unique effect that happens to the light when it passes through a rain droplet, for instance, that produces this rainbow. And we'll want to explore what is happening here in this process. So white light is um, dispersed as the water, um, as the light passes through the water droplet. And um, because there are different wavelengths of light, they're actually split up and they actually have slightly different angles depending on that wavelength of that particular colour. And so for us down here on Earth, um, we, our eyes can actually catch all of these individual dispersed colours and that's why we get this lovely gradient of the, of the rainbow in the sky. Um, but you may have noticed also that the, the shape of the rainbow as we see it in the sky looks like a bit of a semicircle. Mm. And that's an interesting sort of um, shape because what actually happens with the light is it actually comes into our eyes in the shape of a cone. Mm. And the point of that cone actually occurs on our retinas uh, in our eyes. Um, and because these colours are all around the same angle of that 40 to 42 degree refraction that we get when light passes through the raindrop, we get that cone shape. And so what actually happens with that cone of light is, well, it looks like a semicircle because we're so close to the ground, right? And actually, if the ground wasn't there, you would notice that the rainbow actually made a full circle with the cone sort of coming towards us. Now, of course, we know you just said rainbows occur kind of during the time of rain or a storm. So they're probably not the most useful uh, events for predicting the weather. Um, the rain's already here. <laughs> There's not much you can do about it. But there's a very similar optical phenomena that I know about and that lots of Indigenous people know about that's very similar to a rainbow and works very similar to a rainbow in that it's also a, another transient optical phenomena. This one is called a moon halo. Now, this is something that happens when we have an incredibly bright light source like the moon, a full moon, it's very bright. Uh, and then also very specific atmospheric conditions um, that need to take place as well. So what we know about moon halos is that they're generated by ice crystals that get suspended in a very specific type of cloud. Now this cloud is called a cirrus cloud. Uh, you might recognize them, I see them all the time. Uh, they're very wispy, very fine clouds, almost uh, like fairy floss but in cloud form. Uh, and it's these clouds that contain the ice crystals to produce the, the moon halos. Now what happens is for these clouds to form, uh, a warm front comes in contact with a cold front. And it's this cold front that contains all of that rain and stormy weather. And when these two systems come in contact with each other, the warm air, we know, it rises very much the same case as warm air down, down here on Earth. Now, the cold air is denser, so it stays down here. The warm air gets pushed above. Uh, and when it's up there, quite high in the atmosphere, it experiences really high uh, acceleration uh, due to high velocity winds and gravity winds that occur at that level of the atmosphere. So these cirrus clouds containing these ice crystals, they get pushed in a certain direction and then the trailing uh, cold uh, pressure system is following behind, kind of lagging behind. So as the, uh, as the light, now we're talking about the, the actual um, ice crystals. And as that light passes through the ice crystals, very similar to what you were describing with the rain droplet, uh, the light enters uh, and it enters usually at one of these, um, one of these hexagonal faces um, up the top here or down the bottom. And then of course the ice crystal has these uh, more columnated uh, faces as well. So it enters at some point and then what's really interesting about ice crystals is that they're all kind of very similar. 
um, to the molecular scale. So their, their molecular structure uh, is basically identical. They're not like snowflakes where you have a lot of different unique shapes. Uh, these ice crystals are very, very similar. And that gives us a very similar effect. So what we see is the light enters, uh, it gets refracted, again, that slows down and it changes direction. And then it exits the crystal. And again, it changes direction, it slows down uh, because we're in a new medium now. Uh, and then it, it's basically transferring a point of light. Now, when this happens with lots and lots of ice crystals, we get many, many different points of light. And that, of course, eventually creates this beautiful halo effect. Um, now, as I was saying, we do get very similar results. This is what we call um, the 22 degree halo. Uh, and that 22 degrees refers to the angle at which the light is refracted uh, due to that ice crystal. And this is the majority of moon halos that we see. However, we can see some slight variations uh, between the moon halos.